So uh, today we are going to be talking about uh, Update 7 to version 28. My name is Kyriakos. I'm a community manager and forum moderator. You might have uh, already chatted with me on the forum. And uh, we are going to be doing a, an overview, not a very long one, but I think it's quite informative of what's new with Update 7, an update that's making the 3CX PBX more reliable, smarter, safer, and more connected. We're going to be looking at the latest features and improvements, and as always, we've got plenty to go through. So let's uh, go right ahead and start uh, going through what uh, we've got for today. So we've got three main areas of improvements we're covering today. Firstly, we've got several enhancements for reliability. That's uh, really uh, a real push to keeping the system in top shape and making sure you all have very high uptimes. Then we will go, we will go over improvements made to the data export functionality, as well as the new Grafana dashboards introduced, introduced for Update 7 enhancing both the, how the data and insights into the system are handled. After that, we have what might be the biggest standalone change for this time around, boosting the security and the performance of the system as well. And finally, we're going to take a look at a number of other small and new features and improvements, so you can know what else is coming with this update. And uh, it is quite uh, a few things that, that are there. And we're starting with uh, health monitoring. So let's dive right in and see what this enhancement is bringing to the table. Reliability and uptime system watcher. So the system watcher component that was there from before has gotten much more powerful. It's now actively monitoring both the 3CX services and the underlying system and collecting metrics for both of those areas. And now it's also able to take action when it's needed. So the system watcher auto starts any service that might stop. Any service component, if it's detected as failed, the system watcher will jump to action and immediately restart it. This will minimize any downtime we're talking about seconds now. So in the likely event that the service stumbles, you don't have a delay anymore of a user maybe noticing that something is not working as it should be, letting an admin know, escalating to the tech team so that somebody can get onto the system just to reload the service. The system watcher does that automatically within seconds. It also has a, a, a view where you can be informed and uh, by the money of the monitor metrics like the CPU usage, the memory usage, the disk and the network usage. On top of being informed by viewing them on the PPX, we can now trigger alerts on key metrics. So when certain thresholds are crossed, you will be informed via an email that uh, the system uh, needs to be checked out in case something needs uh, fixing. So let's take a quick, quick look, look into the system watcher uh, configs. Under the system menu, we have the alerts tab. Here you can configure which metrics you would like to monitor and which to be alerted about. CPU, memory, in and out bandwidth and more they cannot be targeted specifically. Now, some of you that have been testing on 3CX hosted, uh, these checkbox are already pre-checked and preset because we are handling the monitoring on the hosted uh, instances. If you're deploying in your own cloud or onto your own standalone hardware, you can go ahead and set uh, the specifics as you see fit. And so monitoring and alerting doesn't quite end here, as we will see further along uh, while we're checking out what's new with the data connectors and Grafana improvements, giving us new access, improved access to data and new insights into the system. 
Our data connector exports continue to improve as we had promised, scaling the ab abilities for graphical and other analytics, as well as now monitoring the system. We now support much more frequent data exports, four times more frequent than update seg 6, down to 15 minutes from the one hour it used to be before. This is possible in, by some changes we've done to the data exports itself, making the data transfer faster and much more efficient than it was in the initial release. So we've got faster data floating that lets us make the export intervals shorter. Makes sense. We've added uh, more data export destinations targets. MySQL as well as Microsoft SQL Server have been added. And we have improved our support for PostgreSQL. And now we do support secure connections for that uh, export component. Also new, we've got uh, new things that can be exported as well. You can now export the metadata for recordings for better analytics and searchability of uh, all the recordings you have done. The recordings are exported still by the archiving. This is just the metadata, but it's all linked and it makes it easier to manage and see what's happening with recordings as well. And as we mentioned earlier, the system metrics are now exportable too, letting you integrate them easily into your own monitoring stack as an addition to what we've got built into the PBX. And finally, you can choose to export audio quality metrics so you can quickly spot problem trends and drill down on the source of any audio problems. So on to our pre-made Grafana dashboards. We are now happy to announce that our dashboards are available directly on the Grafana marketplace, making deployment easier for everyone and also allowing us to uh, make updates available much more smoothly rather than everybody needing to download zip files whenever we happen to make a change. You can still clone and edit them and make them fit your exact needs. It's a new way of uh, getting called to them to start with. Now, since update six, we've added four new dashboards that are meant for update, update seven and are making use of the new data we are exporting in update seven. These become available and usable once you enable the relevant data export. So if you were exporting data from update six, you need to go back into your data connector and choose to export the new uh, uh, options if you wish to do so. These are, as mentioned, just the recordings, the recording metadata, the system metrics, and the code quality. But it's not just that, we also have an additional dashboard that's making use of uh, data that was already there, the frequent inbound callers dashboard, which lets you view quickly which customers initiate contact with you the most. So uh, we'll take a quick look at two of these new dashboards. The system metrics dashboard perfectly accompanies the built-in system watcher. It gives you an instant view of the system health at the current point in time and also historically. And it lets you via Carfana define your own alert parameters and triggers externally to the PPX if that's something that uh, suits your needs. Again, CPU load memory in this usage, as well as much more, are visible as, as a glance. Uh, the slide we've got here is uh, showing about half the metrics that are, can be displayed within this dashboard. We encourage you, if you're already connected to Grafana, to go in, switch this data on this data export as well, and take a look. There's too much going on here to cover in this overview in any detail, but we're quite sure that any system people joining us today already know how valuable such a tool is. Then we've got our core quality monitoring dashboard. So now when it comes to keeping track of core quality, there's no more staring just at raw numbers. With this visualization, 
as well as a details report that's included in the dashboard. Again, when you install it, you will scroll down, you will see there's a lot more elements to the dashboard that what we can show on a simple slide. Here you can spot problem trends before they cause a problem and take any necessary action to prevent that problem from actually impacting the service. You can clearly see you've got a delay, you've got jitter, you've got uh, the call quality as estimated by the system, very quickly visible, analyzed and charted across time. Now we are moving on what, uh, what we consider to be our biggest uh, change with update sec is seven, the improved backup and restore. There's been enough change to this component that we've decided to call it backup and restore 2.0 and uh, let's go and see why. So in a drive to make our system as a whole, and in this case, case the backup and restore enterprise ready and optimize it so it runs smoothly and properly on larger systems, we've uh, made quite a few improvements to how this is done. Backups can now be encrypted in a much more robust and secure way which helps you stay in you, within your compliance requirements and know your data is safe from prying eyes at every step, both in transit and in cold storage. We're using now industry leading PBK DEF2 with uh, SHA-256 encryption, which is virtually unbreakable. You can even ha hardly even pronounce the name of uh, this encryption method. Imagine trying to crack it. So. On top of that, which is a very big improvement, we've made a very significant performance improvement as well. The backups are now able to be done much faster. They take much less time, up to 50% faster than it used to be. And that's both for creating the backup, but also for restoring it. So you can, we are minimizing both the time you need to dedicate to such tasks, taking backups, handling them, managing them, but also any maintenance downtimes, which might happen in cases when you need to restore a backup, it will go much faster now, especially for larger systems with high call volumes, large recording archives, this is a, a very critical enhancement because the backups are now far more usable. And of course, we have much more. Uh, let's go quickly over a few other points of note for update seven. These points will not need a lot of explanation, but those that need them, we think we'll be jumping the queue to get them. We need to, they will be uh, of great value to quite a lot of the customers out there, we believe. So we added a new remote storage option with AWS S3 buckets now available. We do know a lot of you are already using AWS for your hosting and for other business needs. And now you can use that as remote storage for your PPX archives. Then we move to data, which is uh, I think more targeted to the German market where any customers there would be very pleased to see native data integration. And uh, we've expanded our transcription uh, capability. We've got improved AI engines in the back end, but more importantly for a lot of people, uh, Update 7 brings the ability to retry a transcription later if it fails. If there is a timeout or if the AI transcription service is out of reach for any reason, the system will go and retry the transcription at some point later so you don't lose out. And we also have the option to transcribe upon request on demand rather than have it on all the time or do transcriptions for parts of the service where transcription is not on, maybe some extension didn't have it switched on, but did have a recording option switched on, you can go and transcribe that on demand whenever you wish to. 
For our SPCs, we've improved the SPC admin interface, adding uh, some additional management options for the rare cases where the automated setup might need a little fine tuning. For most people, in most situations, the automated uh, simple SPC setup is, will be enough. If you need to tune something, now it is much easier. We move on to the Yearling T7 series phones that we know are becoming quite popular. And a lot of people have been waiting for this. So these phones are now officially supported and they can be provisioned properly and simply just from within the PBX. Finally, we've got several improve improvements to the reports filter and searching such as we are now able to search by DIDs through a report to multi-select when setting up the report. So if you are setting up a report, you can select multiple extensions to be included. So, and just get the view on the specific extensions you want, not all or just one, but multiple ones at the same time. And we've got uh, proper full daytime pickers that let you send custom report time ranges. Again, this makes sure that you get exactly the report you need to get the information you need and uh, uh, move on without needing to go and filter this stuff externally. Now we've got our final uh, slide from our main section. We're going to take a look at uh, two new, let's say, features. Many of you doing testing on Update 7 have been asking about direct warning banner, letting you know that remote storage is not fully configured. As you know, 3CX makes uh, PPX with advanced IVR and other telephony and communications features. We do not make a file or a database server. To get the best out of your 3CX PPX, we highly recommend offloading those files and data so the system can do its job optimally. So this is a reminder to system owners and admins that they still have some steps to ta take to get their PPX in an optimal state. You need to have all the archive options selected for this red banner to go away, but it is just a notice. It's not stopping anything from working. It's just a reminder that there is some steps you can still take to make sure that the PPX runs as smoothly as possible and is not weighed down by handling tasks that are not really related directly to telephony. And finally, we've got the supervisor role, something that was uh, much requested within the community. And this new role, the supervisor, is there specifically to let you manage queues better and delegate responsibility for them more flexibly. And so you can go ahead, go into our roles page on our website and get all the details on exactly what this role can do for you and how it fits within your own systems. That was all we had to cover today. We had a lot of updates and improvements for system installers and administrators with the improvements to system health monitoring, data exporting and visualizations, as well as the improved backups being the main focus of our presentation today. Of course, many will find some of the other features we mentioned of great interest as they let you deploy in new markets and in new ways. There's more information on all of this in the Update 7 blog post from Alpha to the upcoming release. So I do urge you make sure you read them so you're not missing any out on any of the features that might not have been covered within this uh, relatively short uh, overview. Now, let me thank you all for being with, uh, with us today.